of transition from this world to Narnia is always a key moment, you know, in, in all the films, so it's a bit of a challenge. So we had got what Lewis had written, so we felt, let's try and do it. But again, we wanted to try and do it in a slightly different way. And, you know, we wanted it to be, again, as realistic and also perhaps as, as frightening as it, as it could be. The, the conversations were really uh, all over the place. How do we want this to come alive? And what does the, the event represent? You know, it's, it is the portal into Narnia. You're lucky. At least you've got your own room. I'm stuck with mullet mouth. So, you know, we have the room, we have the picture in the room, which is a seascape with a tiny boat on it, and then suddenly this boat begins to come alive and comes to approach them, and then the sea becomes alive, and then the sea eventually pours out of the picture and they get sucked back into the world of Narnia. Lucy's room in the attic, which is, uh, I, you know, I call it a little piece of heaven. It's a strange little set, uh, just talking about concept of that room that is the first sense in the movie that you uh, get a feeling that something is going to happen you know in, in the book the the three children the two Pevensey children, the younger Pevensey children, and their cousin Eustace are in Lucy's room, and there is a Narnian painting, or there's a painting of a boat that looks like Narnia, and they keep looking at it, and the water starts to drip out of it, and they look closer, and they sort of get sucked into the ocean, into the picture. We thought that wasn't as dramatic, as visually dramatic as we thought it could be. So what we do is have the water start to come out of the picture, and then fill up the room, and then gradually the room disappears, and the three kids find themselves in the open seas. What you see is that painting come to life. The moment Eustace pulls it off the wall, that's when it all breaks loose. That was a challenge. That was very difficult for, for Brian Cox, who had to design the special effects. You know, Barry had to design the set, and Dante, we had to have a set that we could flood and a set that we couldn't flood. And Dante had to figure out how to match the lighting in both sets. Um, and all the stunt work was difficult. Luckily, the stunt people are just so amazing, but, you know, we didn't really have to do anything. I mean, I'm, I was kind of hopeless at diving. I was sort of awful. I was like a, you know, dead float. And, then, and you know, they really kind of helped us and, and taught us and guided us through the process, which was so fun, you know, and um, despite being useless, I still had fun, so I was good, yeah. <laughs> I'm not the girliest girl you'd ever meet. I mean, I'm, I'm so into everything, which is girly, but, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm not a tomboy, but I definitely love stunts, and I've never been able to do that on the other films because I've never had any. I've hardly had any. I mean, in the second film, I did start to get a couple, but nothing compared to this film. We built a set of the room on a hydraulic system, basically on an elevator, and put that elevator right above a tank of water and locked off the cameras. So rather than have the water, have it appear as though the water's coming up here, the room was lowered into the water and we were able to control it that way and it looks like the water is taking over the room. In the dry set, it's all made of timber and plaster and all the things it, it normally would. In the, the wet set, it goes to fiberglass and other composite materials so that it, uh, we had it on a tank outside with a large tent over the top of it. And then it just would, rather than, it, it feels as though the water is coming out of the painting and coming up, but what we were actually doing was we were taking the set down into the water. It was so interesting to see how they made the room flood by, you know, submerging it into the tank from a crane. You know, it was just unbelievable and something that you, you never you never know just watching it. And um, to see it from the inside was such a kind of uh, a great experience and see how it, how it really kind of works. It was very um, intricate in itself. But, you know, what was so effective about it was, you know, almost so simple and so, so powerful in itself. You know, just standing in that room and looking at it all, you know, it looked incredible. 
and that was one thing that really stuck out for me. It was weird because sometimes, you know, the set would take four hours to dry. So we do one take and then we wait four hours and we go and do something else and then we come back and we go and do that shot again. So there was quite a lot of pressure. It was very tiring though. I mean, we were doing a lot of underwater stuff and I, I, was, I had a cough and cold for about, um, nearly about two months. And, um, and it was very interesting how tiring it just was to be in water all day. We get done sorry, pretty much and playing around and pretend like we're acting but we're actually getting dumped. <laughs> Again, it was just the idea of them being sucked from this room straight into, through the picture, into the open sea, a little journey up through the sea, and there they were in Narnia with this boat right in front of them. That was a pretty, pretty cool little set. We had a, we had a really good time with it. And there are, there were not only physical effects in that, but obvi obviously we've also got um, VFX in that. When I'm standing behind the camera and I'm looking at a shot being lined up, I'm mentally essentially jumping to the very end of my process, which is putting the final image together and just look at that picture for a moment, trying to assemble this into something. And I'm literally marching from the lens out and I'm just thinking of the shot in a series of elements and planes and I'm looking at what we're shooting, what will I have to do to it, and what do I have to add to it. So it's, it's a whole range of things but ultimately you're there as the representative of what isn't there and you're just having to think about making sure it's going to integrate into the, into the work. So you know it's a big moment in the Narnia film that and we had an opportunity to do something kind of big time with it and so you know, we put a lot of resource into it.